All right, so what's up, everybody? We got we got Kevin Blanche in the studio again. Typically, we do this on Mondays, but what happened on Monday? How come? What happened is, uh, you know, I've got leukemia. Yeah. Bed battle and AML. There's one guy who has the same disease as me. His name's Brian. He's 10 years out, and I found out that he relapsed. I'm a, I have AML de nouveau. It's one percent. There's only two of us that are alive. You know, that we know of around here anyway, and so I got word he relapsed, and so he he had a bone marrow transplant finally, because I haven't had one, he hasn't had one, but he had one, and it didn't work, he had one in November, he's 10 years away from the disease, and it come back on him. And 10, 10 years out, and it came, yeah, it's scary. surface came back. It, well, uh, yeah, and so myeloma dysplasia he got, which is from the treatment, if the you know the heavy chemo that he had, you know, does damage to you, but to hell Mary, because we're both the, the average lifespan of the disease that we have is less than ninety days, and uh, we've had a lot of it, and this will lead me into what I want to talk about here today at Weaver State. But anyway, I went down his bone marrow, so he finally had a transplant. His son was the donor; it failed. This guy played middle linebacker at East High School State Championship team. Played at the university. He's a beast, and I mean a beast. This guy's, I mean, incredible. And uh, so I went down there and sat with him because he had this. He had experimental stem cell. That he's the only fourth one in the country to have it. They take. They took his sons. He's a half match. It was a half match, and they got a new machine up at the luxury good of death, as I call Huntsman, and they supercharged these purified stem cells and they put them back in him and he's in bad bad shape so i went down there and that was monday so i swore i'd never go back in my old room where i was in shriveled up to 119 pounds but there i was right back in my old spot so you know some things it was just, but i want to talk about the water's curse here today i want to talk about weber state sports and the Weber State young student body is finally waking up. We have an awake young student body finally who's finally waking up to these corporate horrors that have taken over our university. They've annihilated. I really want to talk about this. I, as you know, Cole, you and I did the Weber State. Yeah, we did the quarterfinal game. Tell them about where they put us. And here we are, you know, the Weber State radio show. I know. Well, if you can remember, dude, we, we had a, like a tough time even getting into the stadium. Yeah, here we are, Weber State, WCER, the Weber State Voice Radio, with the main kids. And the main kids, they, they walked right in, no problem. Yeah. Like, but it took us like an hour to actually finally make our way into the stadium, which was oh my God. pretty incredible. And remember where they put us? Yeah, and they, and they put us... What, on the in the north, end zone behind the north end zone freezing cold man i, I don't think oh i could barely feel my toes by the end of that game i could barely feel my toes no. the next day yeah. <laughs> and so right. and weaver was a heavy heavy favorite in that game yep and they lost they couldn't do anything dude they couldn't make any plays on on offense what's well, the water's curse it's now water's curse and so i'm the guy that came up with the term the water's curse now Get this, so I run into this woman yesterday, works over at Weaver, you know, at the, the School of Business when I was there was number one undergraduate program in the United States. It was historic for 30 years, famous, famous school. I mean, tougher than nails to get through. Clyde Cooley ran it, the most famous finance professor in the country. And uh, it was famous for decades. Anybody that's gone through it knows it in the day. Well, in the 1999, we got our MBA program. Dr. Cooley got mad cow in his brain right before we got it. And I come back because I wanted that first MBA. And uh, it, he lived in Bountiful, and it's important that stair cycle in Bountiful burns BSE into the atmosphere, as you people don't know. And Governor Herbert, who's the, the, what, the, the what burns stair cycle, stair cycle. the what? medical waste company, they have an incinerator in Bountiful, right in a neighborhood. It's the only incinerator that can burn BSE and other stuff legally into the atmosphere in this hemisphere. What is, B is BSE like? Mad cow. Chemical? Or? It's mad cow. Oh, they, they just burn it. So they burn medical waste. So you had surgery. So they ship it here and they burn it into the neighborhood. Well, that's where he lived. And then is BSE still, is it still active through those fumes? No. Is it just 
absolutely. It gets the aerosol. From the burning, from yeah. It? Yes, and so we, you know, we fought him for years, and Governor Herbert, which is the biggest dirtbag who ever walked the face of this state, the most corrupt politician in history, the guy who let all the nuclear waste in, he cut a deal. Stair cycle going to lead by 2018. They're going out to the West Desert with U.S. Monsanto and Energy Solutions and all the scumbags, out of sight, out of mind. So, guess what? 2019, they're still there. <laughs> and now they says, oh, we'll leave in three years. We're just going to leave the state. What do you mean, stairway is still? St stair cycle still stairway. right there. After they agreed to leave by 2018. Now, what year is it? 2019, I Oh, it is? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, somebody needs to tell Governor Herbert that. Corrupt dirtbag. So there was some kind of, like, um, agreement between... What yeah, the because there was some the activists team. got active, including myself, and we went crazy about this. And uh, the woman... This is the crazy story. There was a woman legislator. I liked her, actually, but she was ignorant like the rest of them. You know, ignorant, selfish people elect ignorant, selfish leaders. And... Just like the Energy Solutions rats, they protect. She fought for, you know, inside the legislative process. We're in there battling to get rid of them, make them leave. She defended them, defended them, defended them. Why she's defending them? She got BSE in her brain and died. And that's as no. You can look it up. And that's true. That's yeah, KSL. Wow. KSL reported it as, oh, it was a rare encephalitis brain disease. One in a million. So I dug in. They used a bit, the big Greek, or excuse me, Latin word. So I went to the, which is Oxford, who came up with so-called mad cow and BSE. So I sent the name of the thing over to Oxford. And I says, is this BSE? And the guy says, yeah, who said it was? Of course it is. And I says, KSL in Utah. And he says, <laughs> he knew all about stir cycle, by the way. I was a professor over there. So. This leads me into the corruption of the Wattis curse. Now, who's the, the Wattises? Yeah, let's get back to the Wattis curse. What is, which what is, is the sports. So, the, the sports, which we're going to start doing play-by-play -play in basketball. And before I get going on this, I want to first say, all you Weber State fans, how about Damian Lillard last night? Our guy. He's us, Weber State, right? That's our guy. Oh, boy. He went nuts last night. He lit up Westbrook like a... Freaking, I mean, he, this guy is so good. I mean, he's probably your top three players in the NBA right now. I mean, you got him and Kevin Durant and, uh, you know, Scurry, Del Curry, which Steph Curry, Steph Curry Del Curry's son, who Del Curry. Del Curry played here for the Jazz and got, uh, and, and Sloan didn't like him. <laughs> and you ever heard Steph Curry talk about that? He says, well, the Jazz did my dad wrong. So Del Curry says, I always, or Stephon says, I always get up for the Jazz. I want to beat him by 50. Because oh, what? what Steph Curry says oh, yeah, because the yeah, because the Jazz did his dad wrong. His dad was a hell of a player. And what, did, what did they do? Or how come Sloan just run him on the bench. You know how Sloan was. Sloan was either. He just didn't like him? Yeah, which Sloan did that to a lot of players. But so Damian Lillard, and let me first caveat this, and then I'll get back to the Waters curse. Damian Lillard, when he comes to Utah, goes nuts every year. I mean, when he plays here, he, he his biggest games are always here in Salt Lake. Well, Why? It also seems like it also seems like everyone has like their biggest games against the yeah. Jazz. Well, there's a lot to not like about the yeah. Jazz now. I mean, I had season tickets for years. They used to play exhibition exhibition games here at Weber. They were a great product in the day, but that was a long time ago. Stockton Malone left; it left, and mm -hmm. so they got lots of problems down there. In fact, I know Donovan Mitchell personally, and I know him from Brooklyn, my days in Brooklyn, because my daughter used to live by his mom. Oh, really? Wow. And I never knew he'd be this. I rode on the plane with him here uh, before the first, you know, rookie camp after he'd been drafted. Me and him talked, and, uh, you know, we talked a lot about the fan issues and fans going off on uh, Kevin Durant, blah, 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 yeah, blah. What, what's up? What's your opinion on that? Well, the, it's been talking. going on for years, and they refuse to clean it up. It's a racist society that a culture that's been developed through a group of, you know, and, and it's just, and the Miller family's refused to clean it up. It's been going on for years, just like he said. Did, wasn't there, didn't, was it, um... Well, Kevin Durant? They, no, it was, there was something with uh, Carl Malone and, who was the owner at the time? 
Larry Miller? Larry Miller. Didn't Larry Miller say something to Yeah, he said some pretty, yes. Some pretty racist yes, it's been going on for years here. And that's when uh, Rick Mahorn called Carl Malone Uncle Tom. Oh, okay. And so, you know how Carl Malone, Carl Malone did the old knee to the thing, elbow to the head, which Carl Malone was nothing to mess with when he played. Ask oh, Isaiah he, Thomas. He was a beast. Oh, and he'd go at you with those elbows and those knees. <laughs> So, and so him and Rick Mahorn fought over this. And so, but this has been going on for decades. But so back to Damien, who's, I, I know Damien personally. Not only is he a fantastic, incredible athlete, he's a fantastic person. He's intelligent as they get. But uh, I mean, smart. So he'll say, he'll tell you right in public the reason he loves to, he'll kill. kill They'll beat the Jazz by 20, 30 every time. He says, I get up so hard because when I played at Weber State, including the Ogden, Utah media, totally ignored me. I used to tell people all over, my friends, everybody, I says, we, the first time I saw him play when he was a freshman, I have a friend named Chris, who's a great sports fan, we talked this morning. I says, Chris, you remember the day I told you, you got to come see this little kid, he's going to play in the NBA? He says, oh boy, did you call that? And I says, this guy is incredible. And so all we heard was Jimmer, 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 because he was playing at BYU at the time, including out of the Ogden media. He never forgot that. I mean, people wouldn't even go to the games. They would, I mean, it was all Jimmer, Jimmer, he's going to be the next NBA, which he sucks. Yeah, which he, he didn't do anything. He uh, he's playing for NBA. Phoenix, the worst team in the NBA now on the is bench. He, is he back in the NBA? Yeah, he now? just signed a new contract. And, of course, that was all over the media here. He was, what, playing, he was playing in China for a little while. Yeah, and he, he ain't nothing. He ain't no, nothing. Dude, I mean, he's, he was good at BYU. He could just throw up three pointers. But yeah, he was no Damian Lillard. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it worked. It worked at BYU, and, and well, it worked against some college. Yeah, teams, but yeah, but he was. He, no, Dylan, yeah, no Damian. Well, and that's another point too. I, I'm a big proponent of firing Randy Ray. He sucks, and I'll, I mean, you can't make the tournament with Damian Lillard on the floor. That's that's what surprises me too. Is that they didn't make the tournament ever? And, yeah, any of the years that. Well, he was out for one year. He got hurt. So he only had the other two years, and they were up by 22 points at halftime against Montana. Here, Now, here's the water's curse. This will leave me this curse. Now, get this. They're, the, the Big Sky Tournament's a clown circus. It's a joke the whole season because they have this tournament they all go to. So why even win a game and just play the tournament? Because the NCAA is going to give you no love. You know, by the way, it was 20 years ago that, right now, that Weber beat North Carolina and lost that heartbreaker to Florida. Or, you know, they'd gone, and then Ronald Bagley just passed away. But, so, Damien, they were ahead by 22 points at halftime in the Big Sky Championship game at home. I'll never forget it, watching him dribble on the side. A kid named Johnson never missed a shot from the floor, a field goal, or a free throw the whole game. And they beat him, upset him. They come back from 22. Now, that's I can go all the way back to 1969 when Weber State football played the national championship game, heavy favorite, and lost. I can go all the way back. Uh, my old coach was uh, my old coach was uh, at Weber High, Dick Conley, who was a gem, by the way. He was the last national championship, and that was when there was a junior college basketball team, and they, I believe they won it in 1959. They haven't won anything since. And they've had 1980. Now, I'm gonna, first off, at Weber State basketball, they had four consecutive coaches here that ended up coaching the NBA. How about the likes of Dick Motta? Dick here. Motta. How about... Who's Dick Motta? I'm not sure who that Dick is. Motta's a Hall of Fame legendary coach in the NBA, won, national, won NBA championships. Who did, he, uh, who did he coach for? He coached the Chicago Bulls. He coached the Dallas Mavericks. He coached uh, multiple teams. He was the <laughs> famous Bull. He was Jerry Sloan's coach. <laughs> oh, okay. But uh, when Sloan was a great player, by the way. And, uh, of course, then the great Hot Rod Hundley. I mean, Hot Rod Hundley. Oh, my God, yeah. what a player he was. And, you know, the greatest voice. Now we have David Locke. What a joke. David Locke. Oh, he is sucks. The, uh, yeah, he's terrible. The jazz game you know, yeah, on K-Jazz? Yeah. Do you know K-Jazz? does it on the radio or whatever. Same with that. Uh, we have Clowkey here. but Clowkey. He ain't bad, you know, but he's not a basketball guy. But it's bad. So, anyway, in, so we had Dick Mata. We had... Johnson Phil, who I talked to at Bagman's funeral, Phil Johnson, who coached 
the Kansas City Kings, the Sacramento Kings, and was assistant for the Jazz for all those years because Sloan wouldn't get off the field. And then we had Gene Vischer, who ended up being an NBA. I mean, we're talking Dick Mott is a Hall of Famer. And so is, you know, Phil Johnson will be, I think. And uh, then we had the great Neil McCarthy. They're the ranked sixth team in the country. So the NCAA committee, a lot of people don't know that. We were state guy. Head of the NCAA selection committee was a, a guy named Arnie Farron. Guess where he played his high school basketball and grew up? Uh, did you play Ogden High? Yeah. Wow. Ogden High, he ran the so, well, Ogden used to get this beautiful palace of ours. We used to get first-round games almost every year. Uh, in 83, when Ralph Sampson got upset by the great Jimmy Valvon, who died of cancer. We used to get first-round games in the tournament? Yeah. The NCAA tournament? Second round sometimes. Here in uh, Ogden. Yeah, 1983, we had second round, so the championship went... The D-Event Center? At the D-Event Center, so the championship, one of the greatest, well, the greatest upset in NCAA basketball, one of them, history, was Ralph Sampson in Virginia got beat by an eight-seeded, or ninth-seeded North Carolina State with a guy named Thurl Bailey on that team. Thurl Bailey. The great Jimmy Valvano was coach. I remember watching Jimmy Valvano cut down the nets at the D-Event Center. That wasn't that long ago. Jason Kidd played his last college game here. They got upset by the Cheeseheads when he played at Cal Berkeley. I can go on and on and on and on. But Weber State, his last game was here. They got upset. But the the big thing with Weber, they were ranked sixth in the country that year. Then they lost it, but I said they had only like 19 games in a row. So I think they ended up being a sixth seed. They got a home game at the D. They played a team called Lamar. Nobody heard of Lamar. They were like 15-point favorites. Lamar. Which was a guy named Billy Tubbs. Billy Tubbs. Before he ended up being the Hall of Famer at Oklahoma. These guards lit him up. And next thing you know, Weber looks up and they're down by 22 points. And so they came all the way back. They lost at a buzzer beater. Again, the Wattis curse. Then, of course, in... 95, the best team Weber had, Ron of Baglin, the, who just passed away. He, I was friends with Ron really good. He was the greatest coach we ever had. And what did Weber State do to him? Oh, they fired him. For what? Beating North Carolina and almost going to the Swiss 16. So, anyway, that's what Weber does. They fired him. Yeah. Did they have any reason? Why? Well, what happened, he got in a confrontation with his wife up at the at the Purple Palace. And, oh. and they got in an argument. He apparently shut the door on her, and she went and put her hand on the thing, and it broke her arm. And there was some recruiting violation uh, accusations, but the president of the university, who I sat with up the game up in 99 when they lost to Florida in overtime to go to the Sweet 16 after they'd upset North Carolina with uh, Arsenal and Gill, you know, I grew up with him, the president of the university at the time, which was uh, the old baseball coach from Roy High School. He... Uh, he fired him, and uh, we were outraged. So Arsenal and Gill, who were both juniors at the time, were outraged. There's always been accusations they were point shaving the next year, but they lost. And then it even goes back further than that. The great Willie Soldier played here. People forget that he's the greatest player that ever played here, besides Damian Lillard and uh, you know maybe uh, Ruben Nemhart in '95. So. Clear back then, the Wattis curse. So we've had, some, yeah. So it's not like we haven't had some awesome players come through Weber State. Great it, teams, and we've lost Heartbreaker. So yeah, it's just this curse. It's it is a curse. curse. We just can't get over that. Well, ninety-five. In ninety-five, they were eight-point underdogs against uh, Michigan State, and this was before. This is the last game of Judd Heathcote before Izzo took over. We were sending packing. We were beat him. Beat him solid. Beat him hard. And then so Weber went into the next round against a guy named Allen Iverson in Georgetown. Yeah, Georgetown. Weber led the whole game. Al, uh, Ruben Nemhard, who I knew great, he was an incredible player, had a great career in Europe, incredible career in Europe. He shut down Iverson. I think Iverson had three or four points in that game. They won the whole game, but it got down to a one and one They're up by one. No, they're up by two. And Ruben missed the free throw. It rimmed out, and they threw a Hail Mary through the air that was an air ball, and one of those, it tipped back like 83, and 
It was a heartbreakingest loss ever. So 99, they come back. They upset North Carolina. They're 10-point underdogs. Beat them. So they're playing Florida. Same thing. It comes down. There's a foul at the buzzer. A kid named Noel Jackson's got three free throws. Makes two, and the third one rims out, and so it goes to overtime. And they lose in overtime to a team that had Haslam and Miller, who played in the NBA for 20. I mean, heartbreaking. But it's the Waddis curse. The Waddis curse. The real thing. Well, why the Waddis curse? Because E.O. Waddis built the nuclear industry. So I run into this woman. Oh, I, I work at, for the Goddard School over there now. I says, oh, really? Who are you? And she's just, blah, blah. where are you from? How would you get hired? What's your credentials? You know, and she's like, well, I, I've got cancer. And I says, yeah. Yes, yeah, so do I. And so I says, you do know that we have a major cancer outbreak over there. So Dr. Hanley ran the program, the legendary football player from the 1969 football team. He ran the program. He's full of leukemia right now. Dr. Cooley died. Doctor uh, that I ended up taking, Dr. Uh, Madsen stepped in. He, non-smoker, I don't know, got lung cancer and died. Litchford got cancer and died. A whole group of us. So what happened, we were the number one undergraduate program in the country until these rats took us over and destroyed our campus. So what happened, this rat we have for governor, who I will never forgive, Huntsman, for giving us this rat, this lion betrayal, came in and decided he got bought. We need a university for this supply chain. I said, what's that? Oh, we're going to set to develop a supply chain to make Utah the hub for goods coming from China. I says, I thought we were anti-usury Christians. Those are slave goods. And so Dr. Cooley says, no way. Ain't happening. Well, Dr. Cooley died. Well, what, is the, what does the university have to do with connecting to that like supply chain? What does that mean exactly? It shouldn't. Ha well, what happened? Utah, st the state of Utah, through the legislature, developed the Utah Economic Development Program with some money in it to develop Utah economic growth. So this is corrupt as hell. What happened at Weber State? And so what happened? They went in and they basically bought our school of business. You go over there; it's all Chinese students that are all, you know, oligarchs, kids, supply chain. So we go from number one school business. Now, this is the testing. This is the testing. We were number one nine straight years. You can look it up. Number one undergraduate. I graduated with uh, the Japanese royal family, Mikado's, the heir. I mean, this is the type of people came here. It was tough as hell to get through. I mean, anybody went through it. So they bought it. They ranked. They don't even hit the board now. The Princeton Review doesn't even. Their test scores are, they have plummeted so low, they're in the bottom 5% of uh, business schools in the country via the test score. How do you go from number one to zero? Yet they doubled their salary, and they're all bragging about it. They brag about their ignorance over there, and they brought in all these professors. So you can look it up. There's a Chinese professor over there who made international headlines. Google it. So what, so what changed? What was the big change today? They got rid of finance and economics. They got rid of ethics. They got rid of everything, and then they started recruiting like a basketball team in China to charge these students more money. So they don't care about credentials. They don't care about the local students. And they were bringing in, uh, like, professors, right? For, All over. For, Just a bunch of clowns. No longer residents or locals. None. No local. Outsourcing at this point. Yeah, and so everybody resigned. Everybody got pissed and resigned and quit over this. Burned PhDs. Went crazy. Went down to Westminster. Went to the University of Utah. And they just hijacked the whole school business. They had five deans over, you know, from 2000. I taught the program to 2005 till Kyle Matson died. You know, I ran that show, and they betrayed me. Yeah, what program? What did you run? What, or what the program? business what school. I was running. I was helping run the uh, whole entire business school over there for Kyle Matson. Kyle Matson took over Clyde Cooley's program, and Kyle Matson he was in over his head. So he asked me. He says, "You going to?" I says, "I don't have an MBA, you know, but we'll give you the first MBA." A guy named Dick Alston was running the thing, and he he's a rat. And when Cooley died, he kind of went over there and hired all these idiot childs. It's a joke over there, and you students are being ripped off. But so I, I told this woman, I says, she's got cancer, bad cancer, you know, and I'm like, but she's still working. I says, you do know about Waters Curse? What? Huh? E.O. Waters built the free actors. He, the, okay, you talk construction. We built up the nuclear industry. Built Hoover Dam. Three days after he got the contract to build Hoover Dam, these are multi-billionaires, by the way, who fund all this school. They named everything. He died of leukemia three days after they got the contract. He's jumping up and down for joy in his wheelchair. And so we have we have a rat. I, I blame it on those black glass windows over there. But oh yeah, you can't see in. 
Well, I think it's radiant heat. That's my philosophy, but there's... Radiant heat, you think it's like cooking? Yeah. Cooking everyone's brains in there? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Turning them into mush? We have, and I'm like, and she's like, what, huh? What are you talking about? You know, and I says, well, what's your credentials? Where did you come from? Who are you? <laughs> she has no credentials. No, they just hired these people because it's a club. It's a, it's a, it's a crooked club. So you can look it up. This professor chi from China, she's on the Utah State Economic Board of Supply Chain to bring in. That's why Governor Herbert says, well, that's why we're doing the expansion at the airport. Governor Herbert says we're going to become the supply chain hub of the world. He calls himself a Christian, by the way. So the slave gate. Of, of the world. world. That's his word. So she said, wow. she forbid her students. She forbid, she says, and she told Utah State legislators, who were all whores anyway, to not go see the Dalai Lama was here when he was here. And it, it made international... Now, can you imagine? Now, this is an ethics business professor. Don't go... Now, anybody knows anything about China... And the slavery that goes on. I've been in those slave camps over there as an activist. <laughs> yeah, what is, what's it, what is it like? Oh, it's hell. It's child slaves. It's yeah, women yeah. slaves. It's slavery in concrete bunkers. And that's the good that's, ones. That's where your Nike... That's where your yeah, Nike that's where everything. A lot of it comes from East Bangladesh, where uh, slavery is legal there. Which oh. the Chinese are genociding those people because... By the way, Christianity and Muslim is against the law in China. Both. And so they're being genocided, though. There's, it's against a lot to have a baby over there. Well, what is the main? What's the main religion then? Like Buddhism. Yeah. Buddhism over there. Well, yeah, their brand of it, which yeah, brand. go tell somebody in Japan that, uh, you know, Trump and Obama's best buddy, Z and Abi. By the way, this is another thing I, I need to mention real quickly, because the F-35 is based here, right, at Hillfield Air Force Base, which was what we were sold was the gig. Right. So the F-35 that Trump and Obama, the most advanced secret weaponry the United States has ever spent money on, one's missing. One's missing today. So, From Japan. We sold, now you think about it. We sold oh, an F-35 to Japan? We sold a whole bunch of them to Asia. Oh. Gave them to them. Is this in the, was this in the news? Oh, yeah. Trump and Trump would be your best, best buddies, you know. So who's the terrorist? You know, it says right in the Patriot Act. I'm going to start this uh, for my YouTube guys. I'm going to. This will be in two parts.